On the morning of September 6, 1949, a 28-year-old local man in Camden, New Jersey, left his house and started walking up and down River Road in his neighborhood, the neighborhood where he lived, and he started shooting people. Uh, he was armed with a Luger pistol that he had bought as a war souvenir. He shot the man who ran the pharmacy. He shot a little kid. He shot the newlywed wife of the local tailor. He killed 13 people that day, September 6, 1949. At the time, the Camden Walk of Death, as they called it, that was considered the worst mass murder in our nation's history. One survivor, speaking 50 years later, told a reporter, my memories do not dim. Do you know how many times in 50 years I have relived that story? That killer from Camden, New Jersey, was considered unfit for trial. It was considered to be too insane. So he was never tried for that mass killing in New Jersey. He spent the rest of his life confined to a secure mental facility, and ultimately he died just a few years ago. That massacre in Camden, New Jersey, is the earliest one on a list of the dozen deadliest mass shootings in the United States. These are only the worst, with the highest death tolls. Mass killings in which at least 12 people died, not including the shooter, going back to Camden, New Jersey in 1949. American mass shootings are a frequent enough occurrence now that they've almost become a regular part of our news expectations. We think of these stories almost as the kinds of stories that we know even before we read the terrible details. Oh, I know how this is going to go. But they have not always been as frequent as they are now. After that 1949 shooting, the next big one doesn't happen until nearly two decades later, in 1966, when a gunman climbed the bell tower at the University of Texas and shot 16 people to death before he was killed by police. It was nearly two decades after that that we got the next entry on the list, when a shooter killed 21 people at a McDonald's in San Isidro, California. That was 1984. Right after that, in 1986, our nation suffered the worst in a string of post office massacres, 14 dead plus the gunman in Edmond, Oklahoma. But look at the overall frequency across time uh, as we chart it here. Again, these are only the worst incidents where the gunman killed at least 12 other people. After that post office shooting, we get the Luby's Cafeteria Massacre in Killeen, Texas, the gunman killing 23 people and then himself that day in 1991. Here we have the massacre at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado, where two students killed 12 classmates and a teacher and then killed themselves. That brings us to 1999. So you can see we're now halfway through the list of the dozen worst mass shootings in U.S. history, and it has taken us 50 years to get there. These are terrible events with at least a dozen people killed. It takes us a half century to do half of them. The other half begins here in 2007 at Virginia Tech when a single student armed with a pair of semi-automatic weapons killed 32 people before taking his own life. That was April 2007. In 2009, we had a pair of mass shootings. In Binghamton, New York, it was a former student at an immigration center who killed 13 people and then himself. Just seven months later, it was Army, an Army psychiatrist who opened fire at the Soldier Readiness Processing Center at Fort Hood in Texas, killing 13 people in what he later described as an act of war. Last month, he was convicted and sentenced to death for those murders in 2009. But these things are coming faster now. In 2012, the nation again suffered not one, but two of the worst massacres in our history. July 2012, a deranged young man goes into a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado, and starts shooting using multiple guns and an ammunition magazine that held 100 bullets. He killed 12 people that night. He wounded 70 others. Five months later, on December 14th, a single gunman walks into Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut with multiple weapons and high-capacity magazines. He kills 20 kids and six adults at the school, plus his mom at home before the attack, and then he kills himself. And then today, the newest entry on that awful list of worst mass killings in America, as 12 people are shot and killed, not including the alleged gunman who was found dead at the scene. 12 people today killed at the U.S. Navy Yard in D.C. All of these are terrible stories, taken individually, unimaginably terrible. But put them together. And remember, the first half of that list, that awful list, is scattered across half a century like this. Each of these killings cost the nation simply untellable grief, the kind of pain where witnesses are still not recovered 50 years later, and they were the ones who survived. 
But look at this. The first half of this awful list happens across half a century. The rest of it, the other half dozen of the worst killings in our history, takes only a half dozen years from 2007 until now, until today, from Virginia Tech to the Navy Yard. The bloodshed of half a century compressed into this blink of time. It took us 50 years to get from here to here. It took us only six years to get from here to here. A professor at the University of Maryland first charted this for us after the shooting at Newtown. At the time, Professor Charles Catania said, if you look at the way it added up, he said this was, quote, probably the scariest data he had ever plotted. And that was before today, when 12 more people were killed. We know very little so far about what happened today in that Navy Yard. Taken as a whole, the list of worst mass shootings in America has almost as many so-called explanations as it has entries. In many cases, the shooter was mentally ill. In at least one, the shooter seems to be at least partly politically slash religiously motivated. Sometimes the shooter's friends and relatives saw warning signs. Sometimes there seems to have been no warning or almost no warning. We have long been mystified when it comes to understanding the motivations of the super violent, and we seem just as mystified now about how to stop them from killing in the first place. Whether or not you like the idea of additional gun regulations, if you thought that Newtown or Aurora or Columbine before that was going to lead to meaningful national policy changes to at least try to stop these incidents, if you thought, for example, that they might affect the regulation of firearms and ammunition, maybe even just as they relate to mental illness, you are still waiting for those changes. But if you have been thinking that we live in an era that is more marked by this kind of mass bloodshed than any era before now, then I am sad to tell you that you are right. It did not used to be this way. But more and more, over time, this is part of how we live now. 